Hello, everybody. So we decided to create a podcast because we are fashionably late to the game. However, it is what it is. This podcast, number one, my name is Zach Moss. I study U.S. security policy, and this is Modesto, the one and only. Hello, Modesto over here. So today we have some very wide interests. So we're probably going to talk about everything from we live in Portland. So everything from Mm -hmm. like Portland to polyamory to Modesto's experience with uh Grinder, and then my experience is studying suicide bombers in uh, Syria, being in the Middle East, and also almost falling into a minefield. So we'll see if we can get wow. through all of that fun stuff. So, <laughs> my desto, the very first thing I have to ask you. Yes. What's in your cup? What is in my cup? My cup, this is a coffee cup, as you can see, but I like to put water in my coffee cup. Is that is, <laughs> is that why it's got a strong smell and it's all fizzy? Yeah, it's very fizzy. Yeah. Oh, that must be like the 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 bougie, mm-hmm. like Whole Foods type of. It's definitely water. from. It's you know it's sparkling water. You know, you know that you know those polars, with like some flavor in that. Yeah. You know maybe a little extra flavor. It's about as clear as water. I'll say it's that. It's very clear and very delicious. So Modesto, just to jump right into it, when, <laughs> when COVID and all that started. Yes. I have a very deep question to ask you. Okay, I'm ready. Did it affect your dating life on Grindr? Um, so I actually really didn't have Grindr when I was uh, in Portland during, you know, well, during this pandemic. Um, mm. I had it maybe for about two months. I got really, really <clears throat> bored, like, you know, really bored. And I was just like, I'm going to give it a try. Mm. And um, no, it, it didn't really ex- affect it because I've never been on like social dating apps. Like I, it just, they're not my thing. I really try to find like... I really try not to be on my phone, especially when it comes to dating, because I actually hate texting people. Like, I actually do not that, like texting. That sounds uh, that sounds actually pretty fucking boring, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> that sounds boring as hell. Not dude. being a texter. Jesus, not being on the dating apps for a little bit of time. Well, you know, I actually wanted. I'm like old fashioned. I want to meet people like at the park, at the gym. And and I know there wasn't a gym during COVID, but you know, like running, like, you know, running at 9 a.m., for example, and running into the same people at the park. Like, that's how I want to meet the love of my life. Not on fucking grinder. Like, what the fuck is that shit? Like, it's that, so trashy. <laughs> that, honestly, I'm gonna, that sounds like a boring life. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Jesus. I mean, what about you? What, what were you doing on uh, Tinder or Bumble or or all of them all of the other ones that i don't know about because i'm not cool apparently every single one of them yeah um yeah i am not the best one to ask about love lives because i'm i i feel like i always have a complicated love life why is that always i don't know i don't know see it's hard though it's hard because for me i know that i'm going to be leaving to school soon so i'm going to be going Mm -hmm. moving to geneva Switzerland for school to study like yeah dude congratulations well, by thank the you. way thank um, you um you but you've always had I'm sorry for interrupting but no. I'm just like super proud of you because you've always well, thank you you know have uh shared your you know your application process you know the paperwork you've like I've seen you like uh study like a shit ton well I appreciate and that am I allowed to say shit sorry I'm like new to this bro I was just fucking <laughs> cussing earlier okay Jesus <laughs> yeah dude no, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, the the thing about relationships and that stuff and moving is that it's like, do you do the long distance thing or instead do you decide to, you know, not have anything last very mm-hmm. long? And I guess there's like pros and cons with everything. But because I keep moving around because of education, whether it be like going to the University of Oregon or going to Geneva and some of these other places or Tel Aviv University in Israel, it, the whole thing is just... it it's made it like very impossible. And, uh, obviously the thing that nobody really talks about is the, the existential, like (laughs) loneliness, honestly, honestly, that is kind of what it, that's what it's like. Like for those of you guys who are listening, some of you guys probably know what it is that I'm talking about right now. If you, Mm -hmm. if you're just like going out and trying to do something anywhere, going to a different city or something like that, you just have these kind of complications unless you lock it down with somebody and they go with you uh i have not had the fortune of doing that just yet okay. hopefully not gonna have a kid for another couple of years too but we'll see 
They're a huge distraction. I don't <laughs> plan to have any any of those demons. Those little demons. At all, actually. I have my nephews, and I'm perfectly fine with them. Yeah, dude. And they remind me why I don't want kids. I love them, but... Yeah. I can enjoy you for two hours. Goodbye. It's also kind of complicated, too, because, like... So, when I was in Israel... <clears throat> so, I studied in Israel. I was... I went to the Palestinian areas, the Israeli mm -hmm. areas. I went through, like, parts of northern Israel, and then I may or may not have, I don't know about the legal aspects about this, but I may or may not have snuck into part of Syria as well. And uh, it's, <laughs> it is a, it's a life that's so overwhelming all of the time to where, God forbid, something happens to me and I have like a kid or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus, could you imagine having a little kid and then like their it's dad Syria. decided to do something Go. stupid and jump over a fence and it was a minefield and they almost got blown up um which if i have a picture maybe i'll like post it here i don't know if i have a picture of that or not but uh yeah it's it's a it's a rough life but i think the hard part isn't so much doing it like doing it as in like being in those circumstances mm -hmm. the hard part is like at night when you are trying to go to sleep and you realize you did all this crazy stuff all day but then you're confronted with the fact that you are you know you're alone for that period of time and I heard a lot of podcasts about other people talk about it as well, who've gone out and like traveled or whether they professional athletes and they're gone or whether they were um, like business people, which I, to be honest, I really couldn't care less about a lot of them, Yeah. but it was all kind of the same. It's just trying to stay as focused as possible until your life kind of like evens out. But obviously the Middle East isn't conducive towards peace at the very, at this moment, at this moment. So yeah, man, that's. Yeah, that's Stop. insane. Like, yeah, you've told me some stories some about stuff. the Middle East and, you know, your experiences with, you know, suicidal bombers. <clears throat> and, dude, that's just insane. Like, it's crazy. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. But going back to Portland, though, <laughs> <laughs> it's like suicide bombers talking about existential loneliness and then all the way back to Portland. Portland, yay. Yeah. You know, I will say when you and I were first moving to Portland. So Modesto and I are from the same town. And so when we were moving up to Portland together, he told me a funny story. And I was wondering if you wanted to hash that out about when the very first time your family found out that you were gay. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess my, I think that my family found out several times, but I mean, I was clearly gay. Like I can remember being, I can remember me at four um, seeing my mom getting out of the shower with the towel wrapped around her head and you know I've pro I probably had way less hair than what I do right have right now and I would just like do the same thing I I you know I was like I always admire my mom's mannerism and the things that she did and my parents would just make fun of me they would laugh my whole siblings be like what you're not a lady and I would like you know walk around like you know move my curves and just like be super gay dance to the gayest mexican music ever and they would laugh and Ugh. holy shit like my mom till this day like reminds me about the towel just on my you head. little little modesto L little modesto with a fucking Stren towel oh on his my, head oh my god pretending that he's got some fucking rapunzel's hair or some shit and yeah like fucking crazy dude and it's cute i mean there's just there's just a lot of things that i used to do like you know the way that I put on my chapsticks, uh, the way that I would put, you know, stickers on my nails to pretend that I had long nails. Like these are things that my parents like remind me about today. And they're just like, you know, you're cute. You're you're funny. Like we love everything about you. Like we knew you were gay, but this is all what we love about you. Like, so I have a question, though. <clears throat> so obviously mm -hmm. Salem, Salem, Oregon, where we're from, is getting well known for obviously its political conflict, which as somebody who's from there that's a little surprising to me um there's always obviously been like a bunch of disagreements and ideas but there hasn't been so much like overt violence as a result yeah but when we see for example some guys like some people on the alt-right coming through mm -hmm. there and obviously then you have the black lives matter trying to counter them but with a lot of the salem's gotten much more alt-right overt kind of aggressiveness about that and a lot of those people aren't exactly the most accepting type uh, towards people who are gay and also people who are a Mexican. Yeah. So have you experienced, has there been a change for you going back to Salem now? Granted, you're from Silverton, which is a little, it's it's 
it's next to Salem, but you worked in yeah. all your, everybody's from Salem. So how, how has that changed for you so since All Right came in? me being in high school in um, Silverton, which is a town uh, about 25, 20, 25 minutes east of Salem, the capital of Oregon. Um, it's, you know, it was mostly like big family, uh, people with money, farmers, and uh, going to high school there was a little rough, but it wasn't rough. I don't think I, I don't, be, no, I didn't experience, I would say I didn't experience racism. What I was experiencing there was trying to fit in, you know, trying mm -hmm. to find myself and it's high school. Um, there was bullies, there was kids that said mean things, but you know, this is just me in high school. I wouldn't say that it, it has traumatized me a lot, right? And then, you know, I graduate, I, I get a job in Salem at a brewery. I work with all these like blue collar men who are like machos and tough. I, I get a job. I get my first job in a kitchen with a bunch of Latino men. Right. And I was like blown away. I was like, holy shit. Like, why is there only Latino men working in the kitchen? And that's when I found out that that is the industry, like mostly Latino men work in a kitchen, right? So it was really, really hard because I was still not out after high school. I, I never came out in high school. I was always shy. I was, the kids always like, you know, my um, my fellow students uh, always um, made fun. You know, they, they joked around, they, they, they were very mean kids and high school kids are mean. Um, so it was just very hard for me to, you know, be myself in public to my friends and everything. Bro, I um, think what, I don't mean to cut this off. So I think your happened over here. I think your iPhone just started, dude. Um, yeah, it's playing Usher. You should probably get okay. that. Can we get um, that to stop real quick? Alexa, stop. <laughs> I, I don't, know I don't mean to. I don't mean to kill it. Kill this amazing story for you, real quick. Oh, that's okay. Like, but Usher in the, the background fuck? doesn't exactly help the situation. <laughs> oh, good God. Anyway, all right, all right. Usher, if you're watching this, rude. Um. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, but I started. I worked in Salem, right, at a brewery, and honestly, like, no, I didn't really experience a lot of, um, I always felt it. I don't think nothing was ever aimed directed towards me. There was people that obviously loved my personality. They loved, they've always asked where I'm from, but there was always like those serving because I was a server. I eventually went from uh, working at a kitchen into uh, serving and obviously dealing with families and people. Um, I always, you know, I always knew when people didn't treat me with like like a human, like they they saw me below them. So, which, but you haven't experienced any like like direct racism? Not direct. No, I feel like it's mm -hmm. I've lost opportunities because of my skin color. I feel like people have like maybe gave me a cold shoulder, but I don't think it, I've I've honestly will say that I'm just such a kind and generous person that I look past that. I truly, truly try to look past people and. I'm like, are they being racist? Like, I am actually not a very sensitive person. Like, I choose to to tell myself that, hey, you are in charge of how you feel and when you want to feel attacked. So you can either choose to, like, um, I think, obviously, you know, um, being aware of racism is important. But also, like, us, as, you know, the minority, it's important for us to, like, look past it and say, like, you know what, I'm going to look away. I don't care about yeah. what you think about me or I don't care about how you treat me because I am better than you and I'm going to kill you with kindness. And yeah. I think that was most of my experience as a server. Gotcha, okay. In a, you know, in a brewery with, like, you know, the majority of our clientele's probably i actually don't want to say that the majority of our clientele but you yeah. know in growing up in salem like having a job in salem where most people there i would say mm -hmm. are republicans and they have their views on certain things that are a lot more different yeah that makes sense though yeah i can only imagine too and and uh <clears throat> portland there's not a lot of people who are uh who are anything other than white to be completely honest and so Portland has some of the nicest white people I have met in my life. The nice is in like they're nice, nice, or nice is in like they're fine. They're nice as in they're nice, like to oh. me. Like I have oh, been okay. surrounded. Well, I mean, what's your opinion on that? Like, what? I'm sorry. Like, 
Like, what do you mean by like, as in the nicest or they're nice? I was saying they're nice oh. or they're sexually attractive. Oh, <laughs> no, there's a lot of sexy, attractive <laughs> white people in Portland. Oh. Just like everywhere else. I feel else. like such a scumbag. You're being wholesome and nice. Yeah. And I'm just like, nah, dude, let's just yeah. cut straight to this. Let's I mean, just cut straight to this shit, I mean, dude. Shit, there's a lot of nice people here, too. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so after Salem, I moved in with Zach. What was it? 2019? Was it 2019? Yeah, yeah, it was 2019. Then. Yeah, I lived in, yeah. I technically moved to Portland six months before that. So. Mm-hmm. I uh, I worked at Amazon. <clears throat> I worked in the warehouse. And How then was I Amazon? Destroyed... <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he did. <laughs> I, okay, so I worked at in Amazon as a part of the warehouse, and then I got promoted to become a researcher for Amazon. And so what happens was there's a course about 14 weeks. I got trained in 14 jobs, and so all the corrupt things that Amazon has done and continues to do. Those were the things that I was starkly aware of. And mm-hmm. the reason why I found out about this is because originally they were going to prep me for a management job. Um, but that didn't pan out because I, I quit. And there's a lot of things about Amazon. Everybody knows Amazon's terrible. Like that's already a thing. Everybody's like, cool. But people don't know the exact specific things that they do. So for example, there's this process they go through where anything that's slightly damaged, not damaged in the sense of like, hey, I have a box of cookies and the box is open or bends. No, more like I have a box of six cookies that are tied together and the plastic breaks. And so they're not connected anymore. However, they could sell each one of those boxes individually. Mm-hmm. It takes about 15 seconds to recode the, the the barcode on it. They already sell cookie boxes individually. But instead of taking the 15 seconds literally to just recode, and so it's like not one big product and instead it's being sold as a bunch of little products, uh, they would throw it into a donation pile. Yeah. However, they wouldn't actually donate the cookies. They would use it as a tax write-off and deduct that cost, and then they would burn it at the end of the day. They wouldn't even donate. So when it's like Amazon donated all, donated all these things. No, they didn't. On top of that, they have a negative, I believe it's a negative 1.8% federal tax rate, which means they get more money at the end of the year. So I think it was like $200 million they got back. And so these are the types of things that they would do. They would also tell all of us. horrible. Yeah, they would tell us Amazon doesn't promote injured people. That was another one. And so Mm -hmm. what they would do is they, you know, I was a lot younger at the time, a few years back. Um, I wasn't as starkly aware of how predatory they were. And so I damaged both of my feet and I followed everything that they wanted me to do in terms of like how to properly like move and lift packages and all this other stuff. Busted both feet. And they had me go to their specialized doctor who had proven that my feet were not in fact Mm -hmm. injured, but rather I had a birth defect in both feet, which by the way, I had that independently investigated by three different doctors um, after I got health insurance for a different job. So their doctor told you it was a birth defect because they don't want to be liable. Yeah. And the other doctors, the other three were like, what are you talking about, dude? Your foot's injured. You don't have a birth defect. And not on top of that, but Amazon said they would cover the doctor, the charges to the doctor's office. And mm-hmm. then they ended up not covering. And after they found out they weren't li- they weren't liable for it. And then they pressured me not to report it. And so uh, what I also found out because I was a researcher mm-hmm. was that they would put little asterisks on people's names and their applications. So if you applied for a different job, yeah. there would always be an asterisk on that application. And so people could look into the notes like, uh, individual is injured. The only reason why I found out about that was because I got promoted to a researcher, so I had a higher level of clearance. Well, they forgot to they forgot to take off my ability to be able to see my own application. And the only reason why I saw, I wasn't even snooping for my own application. I literally was applying for a job and you could see like a pool of applicants who applied and I saw my name there and I saw an asterisk and I was like, why is there an asterisk there? And it yeah. said that I was injured. And the idea was that if you, you label it somebody's injured, they're going to be more motivated not to promote you to a different job. And so originally I was going to take over their media team in Seattle, but I decided to not do that instead. And so I started working as a a consultant instead. And I also worked in some, um, I worked in some public schools as well Mm -hmm. to get into education. So it's like academics and media together, but yeah, Amazon is, is, is the death, you know, they would, I don't mean to rant too much. I guess the last thing I will say about this is that they used to, to increase retention rates because nobody wanted to stay there. One thing they would do is they would 
they would sign up as a part of a program with the U.S. government that says, hey, look at that. We're going to take people across the world and give them a job and so they can come to the U.S. with a work visa. Yay, that's so great. Look at Amazon. Oh, my God. So they would take people from Somalia and uh, Siberia, Russia, and some places like that. But what they actually meant to do was they actually meant to take these people and the working conditions were so bad, they knew that those people would have to suck it up and deal with it. Otherwise, they're getting deported to these these countries that were they're wow, are yeah. heavily impoverished. And so I would see these people from, say, Somalia have like literal panic attacks mm-hmm. while they're working. And they're literally like clutching their head. And one guy was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. But where do I have to go? I don't have any, you know, I, I don't have any uh, formal education. Do these here. people come to this country like with a, a visa, like by themselves or with a family? Some of them have families. Yeah. Okay. Some of them have families that were able to go with them, but they can't leave. And so Amazon's little dirty trick to try to get them to stay and they could do things to increase work expectation mm-hmm. or work, uh, excuse me, work morale, yeah. things like that. Like, for example, longer bathroom breaks. It takes seven minutes at the facility in Portland. It takes seven minutes to walk across the factory to go to the bathroom and seven minutes back. So if you have a 15 minute break, that means you're going to spend half of it walking there. You have a minute to go and then you have to spend the other half. And you can't use like the bathroom like during your shift. Like, You'll get f- that's uh, no, not allowed. No. no. And you, they make it clear to you guys. It, it's uh, not allowed. Yeah. What they do, do a little passive aggressive way. Mm-hmm. So they'll say, well, you could. However, the clock is running and your productivity is going low. And if you get under a certain productivity, then you're going to get written up. And if you get written up, I think it was twice. I think, it was, so I think it was stupid. twice in 24 hours. Their grounds for firing. So like injured people, they'd be like, oh, OK, well, you know, I wouldn't recommend reporting it because yeah. Amazon doesn't do that. We don't do injuries. And mind you, like my injury, they could have just given me a chair for two weeks and I would have been good. Uh, but they didn't, so it got they worse. They refused that. You, I remember you uh, requesting a chair because, you know, it was hard for you to stand on your foot. Yeah, and yeah. And they refused to give you a chair. Yeah, and so what they would do is they would, they would move the injured people to mm-hmm. more physically demanding jobs, write them up for low productivity, and then they would uh, fire them essentially. So then the people are fired and also they're injured. That's horrible. Yeah. So uh, again, I don't mean to rant about this, even though I'm totally ranting about it, but um, I used to have to wrap my feet uh, for about 45 minutes before every shift Mm -hmm. um, and just like tape and all sorts of stuff to keep my feet together because I had a fused bone and the bone on the side of my foot was sticking out, but I didn't have health insurance. And so you would also put um, some styrofoam. I remember that. Oh, oh, like the memory foam. Yeah, memory foam. Yep. Had to design these little memory. I had to design a memory foam pad to like sew together and put on top of the taped up foot. So essentially the tape was to pull my pinky toe away from my foot because the bone was sticking out and uh the more the pinky toe pushes in, the more the bone sticks out the bottom, if that makes sense. Yeah, I watched um, Zach do it one day, and I was like, what? I was sitting on the, mm-hmm. on the couch yeah, just watching on the couch, TV, yeah. and I just see you like cutting up the styrofoam. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, this is for my shoe. Yeah, this is the process. Like, dude, like, I mean, that's amazing. Like, I was just like, whoa, like, holy shit, dude. Like, you have to actually, you know, put this much work just so you, you can walk comfortably. Yeah, that was um, that was one of those things to where um, it was so emotionally hard because mm-hmm. I didn't have anybody to go back to and like I didn't really have like a family to fall back on. And so uh, and I didn't have the money to fall back on anything either. So it's like walk on these busted up feet and hope to God for the best or um, you're going to go homeless. Yeah, you know, well, no, nothing else. how are your feet doing now? My feet are doing great yeah. now. Um, there's still a little nerve issue on the side, but I got yeah. double foot surgery, Yeah. Um, which was, you know, it, well, honestly, I hate to say it, but the pain of having those injuries was mm. so bad to where I was in the gym, I think like three days after the surgery, not working legs or anything, but just upper body. Yeah. But it, it honestly, the surgery wasn't nearly as painful as the injury itself, but I have these scars on the sides of the feet to remind me how terrible Jeff Bezos is and how they really could have made working conditions better, but it wasn't uh it wasn't something that they wanted to put the time and attention towards and so they decided not to you know they're fuckers i've heard a shit ton of horror stories from you know a bunch of people that have worked for amazon and Mm. i don't even see how the fuck they became successful i mean i get it like you know covid like you know everything how how it was running but fuck them like i have a lot of friends actually that don't even support them they're like yeah i don't ever order through amazon like i fucking hate them yeah it's it's amazing and uh the culture there is very toxic as well. I mean, everybody's hooking up with everybody else. Mm. and uh, Like which, any other workplace. <laughs> which isn't, you know, it's yeah. like not the worst thing to happen. Uh, 
unless obviously um did you somebody up gets with someone at amazon <laughs> <laughs> they might be listening i don't know if i should say that i'll i'll skip that question how about that okay <laughs> <clears throat> as i awkwardly take a sip uh, yeah yeah uh yeah also in portland you know polyamory is definitely the uh the thing people do a lot here. I mean, seeing a bunch of people at once. I think that's fine. I mean, it's, it's fine unless people get STDs or something. I mean, oh, yeah, you have to be protected. I, you oh, know. yeah. There is a situation where um, we have friends that are from our hometown who, you know, it's like this type of people you see just kind of, you keep, mm -hmm. you know, you're just kind of like, all right, follow them through life, see what happens. But they are part of a, uh, a sex club in Portland. And, uh, one person at the sex club got uh, chlamydia and then they all ended up getting it. Oh my God. Yeah. And um, granted, that's also how COVID started. One of them got COVID in the beginning and gave it to everybody. <laughs> 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 so, you know, say what you will about polyamory. Do what yeah. you, you do. You free country. I'm not judging. If I you like enjoy it. it, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. I, think... I, I do a lot of stupid things that I, I'm not one to tell people what to do because I do all the wrong things all the time. Same here. I'm... But, just a freak giving everybody the giving 30 people the clap i mean okay that's that's terrible dude but that's when you should get yourself tested like i mean this person is if you're gonna be this 30 and you're gonna be i mean 30 people that's that's a lot like you're you're being nasty at that point like you, you're yep. just like not being cautious and you're just like you know being a little hoe which there's nothing wrong with being a hoe but if you want to be a hoe there's <laughs> boundaries okay because we can't just be spreading our kooka around oh <laughs> man yeah <laughs> that's great dude yeah you seem very passionate about this. um sure like i don't know i'm a freak mm. so i guess mm. <laughs> interesting just in my blood i know i know the drill oh <laughs> man ah uh, yeah that's uh i feel like everybody's uh, gonna go all crazy and wild now that you know covid is kind of yeah, everything's opening up a little bit and people are getting yeah. the vaccine so yeah. everybody's just it's like musical chairs but people are just but with extra chairs and people are just sitting everywhere and just sitting and then mm. sitting and then flipping the chair and then burning mm. it and then headbutting it and then sitting down because everybody's going crazy yeah everyone's ready to open back up including everyone you know <laughs> 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 yeah dude that's that's very philosophical um, so hey you uh there's a story that we were, we, we want to mention about the marathon that you ran is there, mm. is there a story behind that or oh yeah yeah yeah, there was a, yeah, I was a, it wasn't so much like I wanted to, like something that like we should wanted to mention, but oh, I wanted, what okay. I wanted to, no, 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 it wasn't like a, oh. like what I'm trying to say is at the time Rude. there was a, a fundraiser for, yeah. um, for people who have cancer and like help people out that way. And, uh, it was called Relay for Life, kind of a cool thing. And mm -hmm. there's a uh, company places like Dutch Bros and stuff will sponsor them. So I want to give them a shout out for all y'all who Dutch Bros, huh? You want to give Dutch Bros a no, shout out? No, the Relay for Life. If anybody oh. wants to donate. Oh my bad. Oh, I think that camera. Did that camera just stop? Hmm. I'm gonna keep going. Anyway, okay. yes. Look, I'm gonna keep this going. I don't care. Yeah, we're new to this, so please don't judge. We're trying. <laughs> is it going now or i think so is it not going well the red's there so I think okay it, i'm gonna keep this going i like it keep it rolling bubba okay so for people who are listening to this one of the cameras that we have just inexplicably stopped recording and so we had to uh fix that real quick but we got this other one that's been still going yeah before that one of the cameras just like went asleep and we're just like okay yeah. we're gonna have to restart this podcast yeah sorry if you guys mm -hmm. are hearing also like any weird stuff like some humming or something it's actually from the laptop a lot of technical difficulties as we're obviously starting this stuff yeah oh but yeah the relay for life yeah um that was good stuff i i would strongly recommend you guys check it out as somebody who's had a family member uh die from cancer it is very important and it's as somebody who's interested in like health mm. and fitness it's like a, a really big deal for me and so that's something that i did once and uh it was very impactful for the people who have cancer and who show up and then get to see all the people who are you know running like marathons to try to raise money and support so yeah that's all i wanted to 
You know, I've never about? actually, um, I did a run for America, which was in, it was like a couple of months after COVID and it was supposed to be this big thing, but it was just virtually. So, you know, you, you uploaded the app and you did, I think it was a 5k mm. and this was around the time when I was like getting, I was super into running. I was getting mm. into running and, um, it was pretty awesome. You know, I've never done a marathon. I've never, you know, ran like where I paid money I've always been like what the fuck like you pay to run like when you can just do it for free but you Mm -hmm. know there's obviously fundraisers and all of that but I've never done like a marathon where I run in front of like a bunch of people and it's wild dude if your nipples chafe too that's the worst (laughs) I had this one sorry I'm like keep messing around with this mic I'm like not sure if it's gonna blow out or not Um, oh yeah I got my nipples chafed yeah recently Uh, recently no but mm. at the time, I got my nipples chafed. Is that the relay for life? Oh, shit. Yeah, that was it. That one, okay, I was like the least prepared as possible, though. So yeah. if you sweat and sometimes your nipples can chafe, especially if you have uh, body hair like myself. He does. And so, yeah, yeah better. He's, he's a bear. Better better or worse. And so essentially, sorry, I know I keep less messing with this. Yeah. Essentially what happened was I had a foot injury. I destroyed the tendons and ligaments in my foot from mixed martial arts, as well as this terrible basketball game. They kind of like compounded each other. Had a four misdiagnosis. They're like, oh, this is the issue. No, this is the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so my foot was destroyed, but I just wanted to run it anyway, um, especially because I was with a family member that was dying from cancer, um, It was which it was my dad. And so I wanted to show up and do support be supportive but originally i was going to volunteer i wasn't actually going to run so i was wearing cargo Mm. shorts with our friend ian yeah and i ran this but my foot was so jacked up i couldn't lift my foot after like the first mile i couldn't lift my foot so i had to drag it because the tendons and ligaments like literally didn't work so i had to drag it the entire time and uh full circle i was so distracted with my nipples chafing i didn't even realize that like my foot didn't work and on top of that i had a bunch of fried chicken Mm -hmm. afterwards and i thought i was going to die Fried chicken yeah, after a fried marathon. Chicken. That's fried the chicken. way to do it, man. Nice KFC, dude. Oh, That's shit. It. Oh, yeah. That dude. was hot. I have... N- I mean, um, a pescatarian, recent pescatarian. I've been a vegetarian for four years. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I fucking still crave KFC till this day. I mean, Any I... Any specific part I, of the chicken? No, it was, just, it was just a big, like, Mexican thing that... My parents mm. always did. Like we, we always got KFC. Anytime we had like family over, it was either barbecue, pozoles, tamales, or KFC. KFC. So <laughs> KFC like literally just brings back memories. Mm. Like I don't crave it because I, I want to eat meat. Like you know, I'm obviously vegetarian. Well, pescatarian now for you know reasons. But like the only reason why I crave it is because it's just it brings that little touch of like home like the past like you know it's it's like that's that's it's an endearing that's that's so beautiful dude it is and that's the only reason why i crave it because i'm just like oh okay see and like legit like we would make tortillas and we would put like the we would shred the chicken we put the coleslaw on top the gravy and we would literally make like fucking kfc tacos i don't know if you guys have tried it but holy shit when you go to kfc next time buy some tortillas or make your own make yourself a fucking taco kfc it's amazing damn dude you're just like a walking like wholesome pinterest ad and i'm just a fat bitch that just gargles down a whole mm-hmm. bucket also i noticed i think that camera just died as well shit okay. we're going we're going through all sorts of interesting technical difficulties you know, but you know what i'm honestly it's day one Dak. And regardless look- i'm kind of having fun so for you guys i'm a hyper perfectionist and so yes. anytime something slightly goes wrong i just kind of sit on it yeah and just stare at it so this like i said it took two hours to set up like around two hours <laughs> like we have lighting here we have lighting there we got lighting here the blinds are set to a certain angle we got some more lighting over there you know the plant the light the candle like it's a whole it's a whole process it's and a, it's granted do we, do we need to do that probably not necessarily because 99 percent of people are going to be listening to this however I'm but just it's like you, you're putting thought though yeah so it, it's one of those like i, I it's got to be right it doesn't matter like i'm sure no some people are just not going to care or notice mm. but i think it it really means a lot when you know the person that like is like he's not just recording he's like these people are not just going to find us interesting 
if anybody does you better um <laughs> but oh it's God. not it's just it's the thought it's the care that you know i it needs to be perfect you know being a perfectionist is actually really something that i admire about people because it's it, it shows a lot of care well thank you thought. thank and you that's very important in life like people should care and be thoughtful I mean, yeah, and or I they just amazing. or they just look at the thing. It's just yeah. a piece of shit, and they just stop tuning in the first well, thirty seconds. Then in those which people case can fine. fuck off, and like, <laughs> we're not your cup of tea, which is fine. That's fine. You can fuck off if we're not your cup of tea. Like that's fine. Like believe me, there's a lot of things that I say. Fuck off. You're not my cup of tea. So moving forward into this, <clears throat> something I discovered. My the water other day. is getting a little flat, bro. With the amount of things in that, it's probably flat to begin with. Mm, it's getting a little warm. It's getting a little lukewarm. So I just realized the other day, there's a place in Portland called Lovecraft. It's literally a goth like bar slash club esque thing. Yeah, now, we've been there. Okay, yeah. Cool so bar. a lot of people who just heard me that description, all these like goth people are gonna be like, it's not a club. It's like a social gathering. And I'm like, fuck off. Okay, no. It's like it's they have a dance floor. Mm -hmm. They have two, and it's a big bar. Uh, you know, sometimes when Modesto and I are feeling freaky, we'll go over there and bust in a move. But I just found out the other day that it was closed and my heart is crushed now. It's you told closed. me about that and I was actually pretty crushed because we had a good time. They had a we coffin in there. there. They had a coffin that you can lay in. And, and just I have a picture of you. In the coffin? Doing this. Oh yeah. In yeah. the coffin. And it's so, f what's funny with it with Modesto and I is clearly we're not like a the goth-esque type, but we can get down. We oh, can get gothy. down. We can get down with it. We literally showed up and I was wearing a bro tank that was like a, it almost looked like a, like nice like beach colors mm -hmm. and stuff and i we literally walked in i was in i was in like khaki shorts and i literally like walk around i was like but so we got to go back we got to drive like half hour back we weren't planning on coming here and we are now and yeah. i feel very underdressed we, and we this is when we were living like way like southeast. way out way out in the middle of like right now where actually, everybody got shot yeah right now actually yeah. i live like probably six blocks away from it but before, somebody's gonna stalk you. Somebody's like gonna find that out. 40, it's like thirty minutes away from yeah. where we used to live, right? Yeah. So there's a big mm -hmm. stage. So we used to just get blasted and just jump on the stage and start busting a move. It was fun. everybody was very very sweaty. Yeah. When I went there for Halloween, there's like this girl who was. Oh, you went a uh, second time. I yeah, I was, it was the Halloween. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I only went with you that one time, and yeah, it was like there was a DJ. It was lit. Everybody was on the dance floor. We were all jumping. And I was just like, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But like nobody, <laughs> oh, no. nobody we, knows what they're fucking doing. Like the story was hilarious. Do you remember there was nobody on the dance floor? There's mm -hmm. like tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people. But everybody was too scared. So everybody was just like hanging out on the side there. And like that was pretty much it. And you and I were like, OK, we're going to go bust a move. So it was Modesto. There's like, you know, 50, 100 people at this point. It was earlier in the night. Uh, so they were just kind of, you know, hanging around the sides and Modesto and I were just like, just taking sh a bunch of shots and everything. We're like, no, let's do this. We're two guys busting a move, looking like we stand out a crazy amount because we're not like goth, busting a move on this, this, uh, club. And then everybody kind of joins in and starts like busting a move. The funniest thing was that music. Do you remember that type of music they played there? I mean, it was a bunch because we, was, we was, were there like for like what, maybe two Yeah, two but it hours? was, it was like, it was like club music. Yeah, was like spooning with heavy metal. It was like, it was a lot of those we're beats. Just yeah, like, okay, we're just gonna mm, just get well, down with just it. Like you know, we're just like shaking, just like down. moving, like. Oh my god, this is a good times, dude. I miss those times. I do. I still miss them. Yeah, fuck you, COVID. Like, what a fucking ruin. Like twenty twenty one. Do you remember those times we used to live off Powell Street? So we were so poor that we lived in this really really bad area in town. I mean, it was a start. Like it was a start. It was a start. I mean, Zach did. You did, in fact, live in a better area before you moved in with me. But you were still saving poor, money. And then I got poor. Well, you. I mean, you made this like, you made this call because it was going to save you money, <coughs> and also it it was close to your job, so that also saved True. you a lot of money. <clears throat> but you know, it was a start. And to be honest, like honestly. It wasn't even that bad. Like the area, the outside maybe was a little sketchy, but the inside, like we had new floors. Maybe our cabinets could have been a little different, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. But their shootings did increase by two thousand percent the year, God, and dude. majority was outside of our place. So, but we usually just turn the volume up louder whenever the shootings happen. Do you remember that? Dude, We're like, like what I was still... that? And I was like, that's a nine, dude. 
Well, you like knew about guns because I mean, you know about guns, and I'd be like, Zach, like, what is that? And you'd like be like, Oh yeah, that's this, that's that. And I can't even say what you said because I don't remember because I don't know yeah. shit about guns. I'm not like a like a a big like like ho ho look at me big manly man those guns but i grew up with it and it was just like stuff that um it was like the difference between a 22 versus a 9 where like one's obviously much louder and mm-hmm. deeper versus a 40 yeah um yeah that was weird where we're just like bro what was that oh my god what was that that was that a gunshot and we hear like return fire like pop, pop, i thought pop, that pop, were pop, fireworks pop. he was like nope that's a guy and i was like uh yeah. i i mean i don't know i think somebody's the paper next day and it's just like nine people shot and it's like oh yeah. geez, oh i mean i whenever uh, i watch like fox 12 and like holy fuck there's like oh yeah 120 second in pow i'm like that's my old neighborhood yeah you know i i don't know i would say just like after studying in like parts of the middle east so i was there when i was in, it was in 2015 uh in the summer and it was like during something called the third ant uh not antifa inf and in, oh my god what was it called i'm blanking on the name third uprising intifada Mm-hmm. that's what it was but that was crazy uh because people were like stabbing people up and doing suicide bombers and stuff like that and you could feel it in the air before that stuff happened yeah. like the day before i'm just like little whatever i was 19 20 year old zach was like oh man i think everything's about to go down everybody keeps staring at each other like not like a staring at each other kind of way you know more like someone's gonna die kind of staring Dude, not like staring crazy, across yeah. the bar kind of staring yeah fucking crazy yeah man oh what a time to be alive though legit um yeah what says that you're not you're not allergic to you're you're not <laughs> poison <laughs> ivy poison <laughs> ivy and oh, poison yeah. oak i was like allergic what is this what is this thing that you're immune to it like oh i don't know like, man yeah you're you can roll on it you can rub your your kuka all over poison <laughs> ivy and you're you're okay like, yeah nothing th- happens to you like what the fuck dude like oh yeah that was interesting um yeah so guys there was a time when i was a kid and i was camping and i made this bed out of stuff that was like this green stuff and i was like oh this is like a comfortable bed i can just like lay down while everybody's like hanging out mm-hmm. and uh i started laying in it and i got everybody else to lay in it like all the friends and all the parents started like oh yeah that looks kind of comfortable ho ho let me like lay in it too and i started throwing it in the fire and then burning it as well so it's just everywhere um i tried putting it into like my my tent to lay in it as well because it was so soft because there's like just bundles and bundles and bundles turns out it was poison ivy <laughs> everybody got destroyed it was on their face it was on their well you made um, the bed and you asked everybody to lay down you're like oh come mm-hmm. here like this is awesome like check mm-hmm. check out my little my little fort that i made or whatever you're yeah. doing <laughs> it was uh it was on everybody's faces their eyes everything and uh i was good to go and then so that threw me off but then running in portland obviously there's poison ivy so there's times where I may have eaten uh, a <clears throat> particular like, food that made me uh, make a little bit worse decisions. It might have been something that might may or may not be uh, edible. If you're catching oh, my, kept in mind. Yeah, check my, I got you. So then me, I was like, oh, dude, what if like, that's poison ivy. What if I just like rub my leg on it and see if like I was allergic to it or not? So I started rubbing my leg once with it. Yeah, terrible idea. Well, actually, terrible idea in theory, but um yeah it worked out didn't get anything from it weird little superpower the irony is that my i'm so high the guys so the thing is that i'm so hypersensitive to literally everything in the world like physically that uh (laughs) the minute i find i'm immune to something i really hold on to it because otherwise like you give me just even a little bit too much sugar and i'm gonna start throwing up so i gotta take my w's when i can oh my god dude that's that's amazing that's crazy (laughs) yep yeah so not too bad but uh um random question Mm -hmm. when did you lose your virginity sorry the the first time glass of water is getting a little empty so the first time that i was that yeah that was uh i was (laughs) i was a little late to the game i was 17 years old 17 Mm -hmm. yep i don't think that's late i think that's late uh well everybody else in my school was pregnant by 17 uh yes. so well, they so essentially yeah i was really shy growing up though so like i didn't i was too shy to even talk to girls i was like i mean i was like i can't even i can i could talk to them sometimes but uh 
Yeah, I wasn't a wild child. So. Dude, I was able to talk to girls actually because I was gay and I, yeah, was I was thinking gonna say. that I was straight. So meaning, honestly, like this is why women like gay men because they have practiced so hard to want to be straight that they're just like, my goal is to chat to women. Like I'm going to get her number. I'm going to make her like me. And this oh, is man. why women like gay men because we try so hard to I'm talk to them. straight at the cameras. <laughs> And this is why, like, gay, this is why women like gay men, because we always want their, like, we want them to want us, right? So, I mean, I had girlfriends, and they probably all thought I was creepy and weird. And actually, I used to get called weird a lot. And I was weird, because I'm gay, you know? I was gay, and I was trying to be straight. I I remember wanting a girlfriend so bad in high school. Like, every year, my goal, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I'm going to get a girlfriend, like that was my goal. That was your goal. Yeah. Every- well, that was my goal, but I was also straight and I also failed at it. Yeah. Well, I um, was gay it was weird. And I was it only was trying to fit in. I was, uh, I was 17, but I was, I'm not going to give too many specifics because I don't want to, uh, single out somebody specifically. But she was mm-hmm. in college. She was 20 and I was 17. That's hot. It was pretty ball and move. I Cougar. thought, I thought it was pretty sweet at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I grew up with this individual too. So I was like, oh, yes, a double win. So that was she cool. from Salem then? Yes, she was mm. from Salem. Uh, so that was cool. That was a great move. Uh, finally felt like I might not get picked on. Uh, kind of false. <laughs> Still did. <laughs> uh, I guess that, you know, the, the I'd say the worst thing in life is when I was growing up as a fat kid. Because not only was I fat, but I really did good at getting bad grades as well. So I was fat and I also got bad grades. So I was like, you get bad grades, Zach. I think of you as a very smart. Well, thank you. No, I was dumb. No, I was dumb as shit. I, I was, it was terrible. So I was fat and I was also, I was also dumb, but also I had a shitty personality. Mm -hmm. So I had the trifecta. Yeah. What was your shitty personality? Like what was shitty about you? Uh, You know, honestly, I feel like just having like a mild anxiety attack every time somebody tried talking to me, I was like, no, the head. Hi. I, mean, I, I did have like, one friend that was a girl and uh i don't know if she wants a shout out or not but she, i had like one friend that was a girl but that's because she got bullied as well so we both yeah. got bullied together and that was kind of that but uh <clears throat> yeah so now i just uh started working out didn't you know still shitty personality but mm-hmm. i don't think you have a <laughs> shitty personality i actually think your personality what about you Mod- what about you modesto uh what was your first experiences however just fair warning that uh you know, Milo Yiannopoulos, I think that's how you mm-hmm. say his name. He got in trouble for some of the things that he said. So I just, okay, well, I <laughs> I'm just giving you my, giving you a heads up on that. One. <laughs> my, we're talking about the virginity, right? Yeah, right. Is that what we are we still on that train? Yep, I sure. Feel like we, nope. We're, we said, look, what about you? We're planted. Okay. We're planted on that. Okay, so I lost mine at. I was either 14 or 15. I can't remember. Wait, really? Yeah, it was in high school. I was. Oh uh, my I was God. a. Uh, <laughs> A freshman in high school. Oh. And I actually, I lost it to the the gay kid in high school. <laughs> like the one gay kid. The gay kid that they, that was just like the oh, gay kid. Oh my God. Like the oh, gay kid. I love it. Oh my God. You know, God. small town, small high school, and there's a gay kid and everybody knows about him. And you know, he was actually well known. He was, I don't, I mean, he was, he was kind of popular, but I uh yeah i had a friend that i was by the way this is a whole nother story but i had a friend in texas this is a great story actually wait real quick before we go on a second story i Mm -hmm. I gotta figure this out so so you were trying to be straight for the longest time yeah so you're just like get out of my face gay boy but at the end of the day just hang out with him in the stall deep in my core no we didn't hang out in the stall we didn't we probably hung out like twice hung out outside of high school hung out in the bus stop like is that how you lost your virginity no like i would like literally jump out my window at like 10 p.m. and oh. go to his house. Oh, his dude, that's like asleep. some that's like some twilight stuff. It was kind of some twilight shit. Wow, but, and you know. So he's just like you know calling you on his home phone because we're in middle school, and he's just like, "Hey, is Modesto high there?" School. Oh, that was high school. Yeah, 14, 15. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah, you're right. Freshman. Jesus. Yeah, that I know, be right? High it. Okay. I know. So you did have a cell phone at this time. I had just gotten my cell phone. So yeah. it wasn't like you calling each other on your home lines asking like, hey, is Modesto mm, there? And no, then, it was. And then he's just we like, yeah, hey, why don't you meet me over here in the middle of the night? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I went over to do homework. I guess right? it's like stray dudes, the huffing like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or those burly old like creepy guys as well. 
Yeah, so he would invite okay. me to go do homework, and I would mm. obviously show up with no homework because I didn't want to do homework. <sighs> and Sorry. we know where that um, would lead things to. Yeah. But I mean, it was fine. I mean, it was a, it was an experience that I won't. It's like it's an experience that I won't forget. It wasn't the best. I don't think his intentions were in the right place. I think he mm. was he was very comfortable with himself and in a, in a whole different level. So to him, it was just fun and games. And for mm. me, it might have been a little bit more like you know intimate and more like did your soul meaningful. get crushed um, did he break your heart no he didn't break my heart because mm. like i said it only happened twice and twice or three times but i no more than five i know that for sure uh but no my soul wasn't crushed i just like it just i knew who he was like i know what type mm. of per- i know where his intentions were which is fine it's fine like i mean i don't care it's just it's high school it's my past today and that's beautiful i, I had four pregnancy scares for that girl oh my god <laughs> oh you know yeah. Zach, with we're going on number six now with the amount of girls that you've told me that you've been with like i would Dude, not be surprised you just, if you i i haven't been with a lot of girls by the way i don't don't think i'm a okay. don't don't think i'm a i'm a tool and a half for that you know maybe find something else but uh yeah i haven't been with that many people to okay. be honest I'm yeah not that, i'm sorry I'm not that adventurous. i was thinking about my other friend I was, I was thinking about the other person yeah and they already think i'm probably an asshole so mm. I just he's not an asshole he's actually a really cool guy <laughs> yeah. yeah let's let's help let's help yeah but yeah i don't know man it's a it's a weird situation and also we didn't really have the snapchats and all that stuff back then the facetimings the no instagrams is no we yeah. did not Texting. that was like right as everything came out too what was it? except for like uh, facebook and myspace myspace i am yeah Ugh. remember that Ugh. Someone's gonna dig up my old MySpace account. If you're account. gay, say one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, three to her like this, or else Jesus is gonna know that you're gay. Yeah, and it's like, what is going on right now? I used, I actually used to chat with a lot of girls on MySpace. I am. Did you know that? Uh, did you know that Grinder, mm-hmm. the owners of Grinder, they're the ones that created Tinder. Um, so all you all you homophobes out there, look, a lot of you guys owe your debts to the Grinder. And for those of you guys who don't know what Grinder is, because we've referenced it a bunch of times, it's like a gay dating app, mm-hmm. right? Essentially, yeah. Yep, it's just like um, it's not like a Tinder. It's just you know, I don't know what is it like. I don't have dating apps, so I don't know. It's, it's kind of like Tinder. Like. It's a little bit more sleazy, though. I think. No, well, Tinder you swipe. You don't really swipe on Grinder. Yeah, like, you you go and there's like a bunch of boxes, a bunch of profile pictures, and you either tap because you like you're hot, or you either do a hey. And what was the other one? There's a oh, tap and a do hey. You, do you remember? Sorry. Uh, hi, I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. Do you remember that app, Hot or Not? Do you remember that? Did you ever get one of those? Nope. Hot or Not was one where it was like, you post your pictures and people literally will grade you, a scale from one to 10, how hot you are. And so every you know, everybody, it was like a thing for a short period of time. So everybody would check in every three seconds and be like, 100 people voted on you and you but are see, a this 7.5. Is, this is gross. This is why yeah. I don't do the this is, this is why, the dating ads well, because these like, are like kids doing it though. Well, you know, these so, are like these are like high school that's kids. That's even worse. Like yeah. in high school like if you're if you're being yeah. rated as the least hottest then you're just it's like, detrimental and people probably kill themselves it's terrible yeah. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. And then if you're rated as the highest and you're probably a rageous cunt and you're going to grow up to be like Yep. <clears throat> a fucking disgusting bitch. Some people, I know some people that like kept their hot or not. Apparently that's still a thing cuz one of my yeah, one of my friends decided to go back on hot or not and see who still has her profiles. And oh he found he found her on there and he literally screenshots it and sends it. He's like, "Do you know nope. you still have this?" And she's like, "Oh my god, I thought I like deleted that." And we were both looking at it like, "No." Nope. No, that look. You knew the you reason still had why it. you're I still don't looking. Like dating ads because people just they judge you based on a fucking photo. They judge you based on a little bit about you, and that's it. But I think there's that's so all that much counts, Modesto. More. Nope, that's all that counts. <laughs> You're an asshole. All, it, the only there's thing that so counts. so much more to people than pictures and a little bit about themselves. Here, like I'm a Desto, and, and I care about people's personalities. I do. No, it's all about their their looks, and then their money, and then um, their size. And then they're um, something, 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 and then their personality, something and then their down intelligence, there. and then their intelligence. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's like bottom fifteen, and I can't even label 
what mm. would come before that, but it's it's the bottom of that. <laughs> it's the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Unbe- <laughs> below all of that would be like giving money to orphans. Yeah, that's the, that's okay. the, that's the bottom. Yeah. I guess so. I say I say that ironically as like <laughs> there's that fundraiser. Okay. I'm not gonna go on a rant about this. There was a fundraiser a while back with uh some workers in Salem who uh were trying to clean up Salem Parks and they got attacked by a guy who's having a psychotic episode. There's a homeless camp called Wallace Marine Park. They got attacked, they got their eyes gouged out. Um their the homeless guy had a pit bull who started attacking them as well. Uh, the police, based off the people that are around there, the police were called. The police didn't do anything about it. They took a long time to get there, despite the fact they regularly patrol this area. But anyway, because they're part-time employees, they didn't have health care, and they couldn't cover their medical expenses. And so uh, a bunch of us were trying to like rally together and, and uh, do a fundraiser for them. Mm-hmm. And so there's like $1,500 in medical bills. Thankfully, they got it, though. I think it was like the first like two days they got it. So yeah. shout out to everybody on social media who helped make that happen. But for everybody that knows, I'm, I'm literally kidding about like the shallowness and shit. Of course. Unless I'm not. Unless I'm not. Unless. Secretly. He's kidding. I'm like, guys, if you're not a male that's like over six foot tall, I don't even want you to breathe on me. Because you <laughs> oh might make God. me, you might make me short, even though I'm not six that feet tall. Me. Other, <laughs> other than the fact that I'm not six feet tall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, let's, oh let's talk about the first time because um, Zach is uh, a model. He's done oh. some modeling work. <laughs> You're coming up with all the stories, man. Bro, oh, like, yeah. come on. These are things oh. that these are topics these are good. chatted okay. about. So, right. I mean, these are technically, good. you have the stories. But the first time that you had a like, you put makeup on your junk. Models have to put makeup on their junk. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So, I was, um. <clears throat> so, fun fact about me, guys. I'm actually a hardcore nerd. I grew up as a nerd. Just, like, the nerd that was, like, a geek. Not so much the one that was good at grades until I got into, like, later in high school and then college is kind of where that mm-hmm. blossomed. But I, I don't, like, <clears throat> growing up as a fat kid, you don't really consider yourself to be, it's hard to be trying to feel like you're attractive uh, when you're overweight because our society doesn't ever really, like, give you credit you know for they don't view about like your your personality and stuff as like attractive as much as they should um but one of our friends <clears throat> i'm not gonna name his name uh but he uh got an offer as a model i wanted to troll him and i was like oh yeah i guess anybody can get it nowadays so i show up um <coughs> excuse me dying over here so I show up and I was, I, uh, everybody's dressed up nice. Like they're going out that day. There was like auditions with like, I think there was like 60 people that showed up. They're taking two guys and a bunch of girls. And, uh, <clears throat> I show up with, uh, with shorts and a tank top and that was it. And the idea at the time was, uh, oh my God, did this literally stop again? Jesus, what is going on? Hold on. A oh second. shit. Okay. Huh. Give me a second guys. Wait, can I take, oh no, we're going to keep. Is it back? Oh, oh, it is back. It is back. What? The oh, my. F- okay. Um, we are so sorry. Jesus. My- it's like a, a working progress with all this. But, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to say it right now. There is a technical glitch that just stopped the camera. I had to cut forward up until this point. We're telling a story about modeling. Uh podcasting man there's so many technical glitches so here, many man. but you know so, we're learning it's day one man like we have so much to learn and grow from true that mm-hmm. but anyway so we're telling a story about modeling uh one of my friends decided to be a model i tried to troll him by was like oh i guess anybody can get it so i show up as a joke mm-hmm. <clears throat> there was like 60 people applying two guys they're trying to get to make it so i show up everybody's dressed up all fancy and i show up in like a tank top and uh so First things first, they tell everybody to stand up and write down their height. And I was like, oh, we'll find out what happens here. And after we write down our height, they see who's lying and who's not. And so they actually come around and start to measure everybody. Well, <clears throat> for me. Why would you lie about your height? Like, I mean, so what the is. Reason, the reason was because if you're mm-hmm. under six feet tall, you're, you don't get modeling opportunities. They're not going to take you. Okay. Yeah. So you have like literally like your potential career is on the line. But I mean, you, I mean, okay, so I know that there was like a height limit, you know, f- to be a model, a professional model. So like, that's why I don't understand like why you would like know those facts, but go into like, 
we didn't apply and then lie about your height. People didn't think that they were going to get checked on. Okay. That. Yeah. So, um, what happened was I'm 5'11 and I was not six feet. Believe it or not, that inch apparently makes a difference. Sometimes even an inch makes a big difference. Turns out it does. I, so, I know that by experience. <laughs> so anyway, Just yeah, saying. I, uh, I wrote, I wrote six or I wrote, uh, I forgot what I wrote, but anyway, long story short, every, if you lie, then you're automatically out. And I lied. And then the lady saw that I lied, but she corrected my mistake. And then she like looks at me and she gives me like the nod of like, okay, we're going to pretend like that doesn't happen. The reason is because everybody there was, everybody there was just extremely stuck up. And I was talking to her and it was like a good time, you know, not a lot of pressure because I didn't think I was going to get it anyway. So it's like, Mm -hmm. whatever. But yeah, so I got it thankfully, which was cool, but which was, what was really ruthless about the situation was that when they were calling out, you know, who's a professional now and who's not, they called out everybody who was not. So they said, if anybody, whoever gets called that you are, you failed, you do not get it, which is terrible because they literally called almost everybody. So they could have just said who won and that was it and keep it there. But they had to call everybody out until every individual person there, you know, they, they didn't get it, which is horrible. Yeah. So anyway, so that happens. And uh, first modeling job, I was too pasty white. So they had to spend 45 minutes putting makeup all over my entire body, just everywhere. Oh, and so this older lady was like 40 years old, had to open up my underwear and get a little. She didn't get she didn't get all of it, but she had to get pretty low in there, you oh, know, dang. so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do this. Look at this camera, man. It's about to go out. You see that little like red line there? I I think that's telling. I think that's the camera telling us that we need to hurry the fuck up. Okay. Well, we're almost. I mean, we're pretty much. <laughs> we got done we with all the stuff. topics that we've talked about, right? You know, it's this is interesting. I feel like we could talk forever, but obviously, we <laughs> our camera wants to bounce, so we should probably figure that out for the future. I think so. Yeah. But yeah, the first podcast, also, honestly, my, not that bad. Yeah, my bladder is also about to explode. Your so bladder is about to explode. Mm, yeah. It Was is. that from drinking liquids, or did you just? It's from drinking my you, uh, delicious water. Your delicious water, yeah. Shout Remember, out to Delicious Water. Thank you, Delicious Water. If any water <laughs> out there wants to sponsor us, please shout out. Yeah, give us a little sponsorship, and, you know, some nice coffee, because I drink coffee at yeah, by the 9 way, o'clock at night, because I'm a psychopath like Yeah, that. you're pretty crazy, but that's okay. Um, What did you think of the coffee, by the way? The coffee, I really actually, co- the coffee, coffee was actually good. The yeah. coffee's like legitimately good. Yeah. Like, that's my thing. <clears throat> that yeah. with like a little tiny bit of honey, like, like literally just a little yeah so Dash of honey and some oat milk amazing i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give the coffee place a shout out just yet they're gonna have to pay us but yeah anyway guys thank you very much for listening um with the technical complications but i had a lot of fun hopefully you guys got something out of this i had a lot of fun this is my first podcast ever i actually yeah. was like legit like dude like the second that we sat down and you're like okay Modesto we're rolling I was just like oh my god oh my god like I don't I mean you're so mm. used to media like this, <laughs> your no. YouTube channel you'll probably like you at the end better anyway I mean everything that you're doing like <laughs> you're, you're nice you're so you're like used a, to it you're but, a nice guy well thank you but like I'm not even used to this like I I'm like what do I say like I I am I trying like I'm trying yeah. to be as, as, well, as authentic and I swear to God I don't mean to I, cut you off but I think we got like 10 seconds left okay so cool. thank you guys every uh very much uh if you would like to follow on twitter at zach moss six for the zach moss show modesto posts all his stuff there as well modesto what is your information my um instagram is at m teo juni j-u-n-i and uh yeah my facebook says modesto teo jr all right thank you guys very much done with the first podcast adios